Today on Fresno State Focus, a group of high school students got the chance to learn more about their culture at the Chicano Youth Conference. Plus, find out about a restaurant that takes you back in time. Also, an organization that is looking for ways to inform students about the changes the university makes each year. Fresno State Focus starts now. Hello and welcome to Front of State Focus. I'm Alex Macias. And I'm Johnny Martin. Students from different high schools got together this past weekend for the Chicano Youth Conference at Fresno City College. The conference was put together by Mecha, a student organization that promotes history and culture to Hispanic students. They want students to understand their roots so they can keep them alive. It's about bringing consciousness to the youth about their culture and their background because uh, it is a known fact that when we don't know where we come from, we tend to lose our, our ability to figure out what, what we want to do in life or what. At the conference, students visited different workshops and enjoyed folklorico dances while eating Mexican bread. The event is organized every year. Every restaurant is different, but there's a restaurant in the South Valley that is simply unique. Miriam Perez tells us why. Patties are cooking while others are already put together in a cheeseburger. Wimpy's restaurant in Tulare, California is a restaurant like no other. The way I did it is totally different than other places. Even other hamburger places, other companies, they have hamburgers. The employees that come here because here is totally homemade. Aziz Attar was the owner of Wimpy's until recently. He ran the business for 14 years and made his restaurant a success. The best advertisement is the word of the mouth. If you have a good food, good service, people can tell each other, they trust each other. Many customers have come to Wimpy's from a young age and their feelings towards the food have not changed. Oh, it's real good. Get her done. Yeah, boy. As the previous owner, Atari is one of the few people that knows the secret recipe for the fries seasoning. But the food is not the only factor that sets Wimpy's apart from other restaurants. Delicious hamburger, delicious fries. We don't have such as these hamburger fries over in our state. Anyway, and then many of them start keeping, making note put them on the wall. And just like that, what began as thank you notes from visitors from other states became a habit for all the restaurant's customers. People from all over the valley come here to Tulare, sometimes for one reason only, to eat a Wimpy burger. The name Wimpy comes from the cartoon, Popeye. The whole restaurant has images of the cartoon, but it is Wimpy's unique look that makes it such a special place for many, which is why the new owner, Will Alfredo, decided not to remodel the place. And it seems like it takes you back, so like when you were a kid, you know, it just, it just takes your mind out of other things and it's time for you to just enjoy a burger and a good fry. If you want to enjoy some good cheeseburgers and fries, you now know where to go. Miriam Perez, Fresno State Focus. Fresno State students for quality education are seeking ways to stop a potential increase in tuition cost. Doing so would allow more students to complete their goal of earning a, a four-year degree. The organization was formed in 2007 and is part of the California Faculty Association. The association saw the need of having students voice their concerns. Many students have already joined this organization. Coming to school is sometimes difficult for me because we don't have money, but we don't let that become an obstacle from coming to school because of the support such as SQE, Student Quality for Education. Maria Guzman believes students should join organizations like SQE to stay informed of changes occurring throughout the CSU system. The group meets every Monday to discuss recent school events. Collecting clothes for charity is a pretty common thing, but how about just socks and underwear? 
Check out what these Fresno State students are doing for kids. Our reporter Cecilia Murillo has more. Not all heroes wear capes, unless you're dressing up for a theme. But these superheroes are regular students at Fresno State with a special mission for children. The leader behind this rescue plan is Fresno State Professor Betsy Hayes. I was reading an article about a woman in another part of the country who was collecting new socks and underwear for children because as you know people donate gently used clothing all the time but you can't donate used underwear. All students in the campaign class under Hayes presented a piece of work for the project like press releases and social media promotion. Once the campaign was put together Hayes reached out to Catholic Charities of Fresno and the Marjorie Mason Center two longtime partners with the Mass Communication and Journalism Department. Socks and underwear seem like a simple necessity that every kid should have. Unfortunately, it's not the case. That is why the Share a Pair campaign was created. <laughs> Children between the ages of 3 to 12 will benefit from the campaign. Public relations student Gerald Arneson says that it's the little things that count. A lot of times the children leave their houses and they stay with these two organizations and they forget the necessities that we kind of forget about, socks and underwear. Hayes had students set up multiple Dropbox locations throughout the city of Fresno. Once the campaign ends, April 21st, the boxes will be picked up and delivered to the two local charities. Marissa Tatro is proud to be making a difference. Um, I know sometimes in classes you kind of wonder what you're actually doing and with this you're actually helping people in the community. It's a real life the campaign is also receiving money donations to help purchase more socks and underwear by texting the word GIVE to 559-512-7780 and help Hayes and her superheroes follow through with their rescue plan. Cecilia Murillo, Fresno State Focus. PR student Kiana Morris is here with an update on Share Repair. Thanks for stopping by. Kiana, can Hello, you Barbara. tell me um, how fast were you guys, uh, oh no, actually, can you tell me uh, what were the goals that you guys set when you guys decided to do this? Um, our goal was to collect 500 pairs of new socks and underwear. Um, we have not got our final count until tomorrow, but we are pretty close if we haven't exceeded. Okay, how fast do you guys think you guys were able to set those goals? Were they very quickly, were you guys set them up very quickly, or was, did it take the whole three days? Um, we were actually, Vintage Days was one, a part of our campaign, but we were also at baseball game, um, softball game. So we had a lot of um, community support, and on our first day we collected a lot, and we got a lot of support from the baseball game. So we got a lot on our first day, which was surprising, but it's been going on over the week, so we do plan on exceeding our goal of 500. Are you guys planning to do something like this again uh, in the next Vintage Days, or uh, is it something that's coming up that you guys plan to do something else like this? Um, we actually partner with the Marjorie Mason Center and Catholic Charities, and we're supporting children associated with their organizations. So depending on what they want to do, um, this PR and Cases and Campaigns class has allowed us to actually work in the community and work with these two organizations that do benefit the community. What's next for you guys? What's next? Next, we have a final presentation, and we'll have a final count, and thank everyone who allowed us to put on this campaign and appreciate ourselves and everybody else. Thank you. We've been Thank talking you. to Kiana Morris of the MCJ 159 Public Relations Campaign. Thank you. Children are, are the future of our country. This is why the community brought homage to them this past weekend. The Shelly Antonio has this and more in entertainment. El Dia de los Niños Children's Day was celebrated at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. The celebration born in Mexico has now spread throughout the United States and it is a day that recognizes and pays homage to the importance of children in society. The event at the zoos lets kids have fun with their families and celebrate alongside the zoo animals. Jessica Valencia says it is important to have this kind of events for children. To just hang out with the kids, have them take leadership of the day, you hold the wallet and they'll just drive you through life. Valencia says children need to be recognized and loved. On this day, the number of people that visit the zoo is the largest out of the year. Roosevelt High School offers a class for fashion lovers. The fashion design class gives students a unique experience where they learn to draw, sew, and use different techniques that will help them in a fashion career. Fashion design teacher Johnny Vera said it does not matter where you come from to become a fashion designer. 
advice any person that if, if that's really what you want, that then you go after it, you work for it, because uh, most times those doors open. Vera says the class helps students build their character. Each year the class puts on a fashion show. The streets of Selma were shut down on Sunday to celebrate the 22nd annual Sikh parade. The color for parade is held as the biggest Sikh celebration of the year, the Saki, which marks the spring harvest and is considered the Sikh New Year. The parade takes off from the Sikh center of the Pacific Coast in Selma and it goes into town. Parade participants walk by in traditional clothing, while other hand out food to, and drinks to spectators. The parade is an opportunity to celebrate, but also to educate others about Sikh culture. Fresno State's largest student plan celebration brought in over 50,000 people to campus this weekend. Vintage Dates kicked off on April 15th and ended on Sunday. The event offered something for everyone, food, games, live entertainment, a craft fair, kids zone, and so much more. This Vintage Dates featured a super, superhero comic theme, which included an outdoor screening of the Star Wars The Force Awakens. The three-day event has been a tradition since 1975 and showcases student clubs and organizations as well as community vendors. That's your entertainment news. Now back to Alex and Johnny. Thanks, Nichelle. Coming up on Fresno State Focus, find out why the university is banning hoverboards. Then, Naomi Jimenez with Bulldogs in the Kitchen will show us how to make a healthy recipe. All that when we come back. This is our Fresno State forming relationships and learning experiences that last a lifetime. Making friends who are like family, learning from professors who treat us like family, and earning a degree to make a better future for our family. Engaging our alumni generation by generation by generation. This is our Fresno State. Welcome to the family. Success. At Fresno State, it's no secret. It's discovering new ways to change our world. It's creating opportunities as diverse as our community itself. It's in the distinction of our graduates as they lead us into the future. Success is no secret at Fresno State. It's our mission. You guys are having a great Wednesday so far. Let's take a look at our weather. As we can see on the East Coast, there's not major activity going on, any systems, but it's another whole different picture over here in the middle of our nation. As we can see, we have a lot of rain systems going on. And in fact, in Texas, there's a lot of floodings going on that has taken the lives of at least seven people so far. And more than 1,200 people have been evacuated because the situation is very difficult right now. So for you guys in Texas, please be careful and be alert you know, at all times. And for, our, for ourselves over here in the West Coast, as we can see, we also don't have a lot of systems going on, but, and we've been enjoying very nice weather so far, but we will have a storm system coming on and it will affect our weekend. I'll tell you more how in just a bit. But for our air quality, as we can see, we have a lot of moderate, not too great, but it's okay, with the exception of Merced County. So good for them. And for our highest for today, it's scheduled to be 85 degrees. We have humidity of 33% and we have winds of three miles per hour coming from the east. Not too bad. Our weather is looking very good. So as I mentioned before, 85 will be our highest. It's partially sunny. It's still nice outside. Very beautiful weather to go out. For Thursday, mostly sunny as well. But as I told you, that, that shower system that is coming, it will bring us some rain on Thursday night and it will move on Friday, as you can see, and our temperatures will drop to the low 70s. So just keep that on mind when you go out this weekend. And for to begin our weekend, it will be sunny, look at that sun, and we will be in the low 70s. That's all for weather, let's go back to the news. One of the hottest new modes of transportation is becoming extinct on California state campuses. Fresno State is the latest university to ban hoverboards from being allowed inside classrooms. The reasoning, they are considered a fire hazard. Reporter Justin Ballinger has the story. First, there were bikes. Then came skateboards. Now is what seems to be the most unique, modernized transportation method of them all, the hoverboard. Hoverboards are the latest trend in which allows you to move with close to no effort at all. 
All you need is balance and let the board do the rest. They were seemingly the perfect transportation device on campus that quickly got you from class to class. All that changed when University Communications issued an email in late March banning them from the interior spaces on the Fresno State campus, considering them a potential fire hazard. I mean, I know there's going to be careless people, but I, I highly doubt somebody's going to come and purposely try to, you know, use something that's so expensive and try to purposely, you know, destroy it. The fire hazard issue comes from previous cases in which hoverboards have spontaneously ignited in flames. The problem comes when the hoverboard is charging and has been overcharged. To some students, the ban doesn't make much sense, questioning the likelihood and rarity of a board actually catching on fire. Well, I do agree a little bit with them that it is a fire hazard, but at the same time, you have more chances of hitting the lottery than it burning. The enforcing of this new rule was a recommendation from the CSU Office of Risk Management in representation as the safety of the students and faculty as their top priority. Since the email was sent out, it has become rare to find hoverboards being ridden on campus at all. Fresno State is doing their best to make sure that their students' and faculty's safety is first by eliminating even the slightest risk in which hoverboards possess. Fresno State isn't the only school to be a part of the hoverboard ban. AP News reports more than 30 universities are taking part. I don't see a problem with hoverboards. <coughs> it seems like an excellent form of transportation for Fresno State students. The chapter of the two-wheeled machines that seem to be one of the coolest trends on campus is officially coming to an end. Back to walking we go. Justin Ballinger, Fresno State Focus. Eating nutritious food can help us have a healthier life. Joining us once again is Nomi Jimenez with Bulldogs in the Kitchen. Nomi, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having so, me. Uh, can you just remind some of our viewers, what is Bulldogs in the Kitchen? Bulldogs in the Kitchen is a program that brings the athletes to the kitchen. We talk about nutrition, the importance of nutrition, and also the importance of cooking healthy meals in order to sustain their, their um, athletic performance, most, which is one of the most important things, you know. A absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What do we have here today? Today we're, mo we're ma <laughs> excuse me, we're making roasted chickpea lettuce tacos. I've also got, um, we used uh, sauteed veggies, and then we've got a fresh agua fresca, um, honeydew, Juice is oh, what it is. Wow. Yeah. So how do we put this all together? Okay, so you're gonna take, I've got asparagus, um, I got yellow squash, tomatoes in here, and I've also actually added um, almonds in here for a little crunch. Okay. So we're gonna take your sauteed veggies right. and you're gonna start building your taco. Okay. So whatever you prefer to add on here. And then. Um, Looks good already. <laughs> yeah, then we're gonna add the roasted chickpeas. Okay. Now, I mean, can you just add on as much as you want? Uh, this is, yep. This is, is your pers personal preference? These, I mean, these are very light um, tacos. It's pretty much, you know, veggies on here. Okay. So these are a great, um, it could be a great appetizer, a great lunch, a great snack. And then we're going to top it off. Um, if you like spicy sauce, you can add, I got mm -hmm. a pineapple chili sauce on here, or you can leave that out. Um, and then you can also we'll, add. We'll leave that out for now. But <laughs> yeah. They, they can do um, that. And and you know you can make these whatever you, kind of vegetables okay. you like. This is you know, to your own preference. Okay. Um, so that is how you build your taco. You can also add fresh tomatoes. Um, I added then I sautéed them right. in here, okay. but this is all to your own personal preference. Okay. Now when you say you know add tomatoes and do you mix it all the way in with the green peas or you kind of just go piece by piece? Um, I saute these together. Okay. So, um, and it only, it was about 10 minutes. These, this recipe takes about t 30 minutes to make oh, okay. all together. Nice quick. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to go ahead and try it. Yeah, let's give it a try. And then we got the fresh agua fresca here. And let's see what you had a little, little twist to that yeah. one. Some blueberries in there too? Yes, blackberries. Oh, blackberries, excuse yes. me. Sorry, I'm not. So you let me chef. know. <laughs> Ooh, I like to. <laughs> Messy, but good, very good. <laughs> um, like I said, I always try to uh, make sure that I bring easy recipes okay. um, that don't cost too much to make, don't cost too much, and are easy to make. Oh, nice and easy. Yeah, like it. pretty good too. I mean, cheers to that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. And that's it. What do you think? All right, that is roasted chickpea lettuce tacos and honeydew agua fresca. Thank you, Nomi, for joining us, and thanks to First Quality Produce for providing us with the fruits and vegetables that we're using today's recipe. Alex, back to you. Coming up in sports, we say goodbye to a legend whose legacy is imprinted in the sport forever. Plus, the Bulldog softball team plays a thriller against Utah State. See if Joe Compton was able to pick up victory number 18. Stay tuned for sports with Justin Ballinger.
I got the ball down spirit. Up in my head. Up in my head. Up in my head. I got that ball down spirit. Up in my head. Up in my head to say. Deep in my heart, got that Deep in my heart. Deep in my heart. Deep in my heart. That, that bulldog spirit. 20 years ago, who would have known the number 13 pick in the NBA draft would be one of the greatest players to ever play the game? Kobe Bryant played his last game of his 20-year career, or 20-year NBA career last week against the Utah Jazz. He went out in a way that only he would be able to, a 60-point game. Originally, the celebration was to praise his past but the praise ended up being towards his outstanding game he had. He solidified his name as one of the greatest players of all time with a performance that some only can dream of. In the hearts of Laker fans, April 13th will always be Mamba Day. It was another pitching duel for the Dogs softball team Sunday as Jill Compton took the mound, looking for her 18th win. Fresno State took on a Utah State team that was beaten this weekend twice by the Bulldogs, both by one point. This game's outcome was similar. In the top of the third, the Aggies struck first with a pop out to center field, scoring a run to put them up 1-0. But an inning later, the Bulldogs responded with a Whitney Smith double, scoring Vanessa Hernandez to even the game at one. Fast forwarding to the bottom of the seventh, the Bulldogs walk off on a sack bunt and a crucial throwing error scoring pinch runner Christina Rodriguez from first. This win keeps their conference record unblemished at 12 wins and no losses and 30 wins on the season. The Bulldogs play tonight at 6 in Stockton against the University of Pacific. Good luck and go dogs. Switching to football, with spring looming, football season is almost here. We have Fresno State receiver Aaron Peck joining us today. Thanks for joining us, Aaron. So can you talk a little bit about the season this past year? This past season? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was a tough one. Um, I'm sure everybody knows we went 3-9, and nine, I believe. Uh, injuries hurt us early, so uh, I mean, that really took a toll on us during the year. Like myself, uh, Chase and Virgil at quarterback, so offensively we're down, and it just seemed like we couldn't really get things together as we wanted to. What do you feel the, big, the biggest difference makers or the biggest difference maker in would be this upcoming season? Um, well, I mean, talked about injuries. Hopefully everyone's back and healthy, but uh, we also got some new coaches. Uh, I can only speak on the offensive side, but we got a new offensive a new offensive coordinator and some other coaches uh, in the mix. And I think just a new voice and a new vibe with the team, uh, it's gonna help us out a lot. Uh, I know that with the old staff, everything was fine, but just having that new voice, I feel like gives the players a new energy um, to wanna compete and go out and win some games. What do you feel the new offensive coordinator is incorporating that'll make this year different than last? Um, I feel like he's more of a player's coach, you know? Uh, I think the player coach relationship is very important. So. Uh, just being able to go talk to a coach about, hey, I feel like this isn't working, or hey, we should try this is a, is a big upgrade from what we had before. So just, just, just knowing that our coaches have our back, I think that'll be really important. Okay, and what do you feel your overall team goal for this upcoming year would be? Um, every year, our, our goal is to win the Mountain West. Uh, I feel like expectations haven't changed. We work every day like we won a championship. So, I mean, that's what, that's what it is every year. It's what it's gonna be. What are you guys doing right now that works towards that goal? Right now, uh, we're in our strength phase. Uh, so we finished up spring ball a few weeks ago and we got a new strength guy. And uh, for the next three or four weeks, I believe, we'll just be in there uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, just, just getting stronger until the summer. For those who don't know, you're one of the best receivers in my eyes in the Mountain West. Um, what are your personal goals that you have for this upcoming season? Uh, personally, I mean, as long as we win, I'm happy. But if I was to set like some personal goals, I'd, I'd love to be uh, first team on Mountain West, uh, just be one of the best guys in the conference. But I mean, I mean, it is what it is. As, as long as we win the Mountain West, I'm happy. So. And I know the season is 
looming. Uh, what do you guys feel um, are the strengths that you've seen throughout the spring so far? Throughout the spring? Uh, well, I mean, like I said, I can only really, really only speak for the offense, but I think this year we'll score a lot more points. Um, I feel like we have a lot more in our offense than uh, what we had last year. Uh, our new guy brought in a, a lot of new plays, a lot of uh, new motions, new stuff to confuse the defense, to allow us to make plays. So I think we'll be a lot more explosive on the, on the offensive side. All right, well, I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, that was Aaron Peck. Uh, good luck on this upcoming season. That's all for sports. Now back to Alex and Johnny. From the rough streets of Stockton, California, to the ropes of a boxing ring, Kalisto the Kilo the Kid Madera and his brother Hector have had to endure many hardships, but boxing gave the Madera some hope. Kilo the Kid, in Fresno he is known as just that. To his family, he is simply known as Kalisto Madera. Madera has been training to be a boxer for what seems to be his whole life. He grew up in Stockton where his family struggled to get by. Madera found refuge in boxing, keeping him off the streets. I was always boxing with my friends and my cousins with the gloves. And uh, one of my uh, neighbors, um, he recommended me to a gym. He took me there for the first time, me and my brother. And ever since, we never left the gym. Madera shows fierce tenacity in the ring. His strive to be the best boxer has rubbed up on others. Madera's younger brother, Hector Madera, has been by his side since he was 10. Having had a successful amateur career at 47 and 8, he is currently training for his first professional fight. Hector says his biggest supporter is Kalisto, his role model. It's pretty cool uh, growing up with him. It's like having your power right there. Uh, yeah. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go, uh, go to the store, go with him, yeah. go to the gym, go with him, go to work, go with him. So it's, it's pretty cool uh, just having him right there. Boxing to be the best has kept Kilo and his brother Hector off the streets and given others like them a chance to succeed in life. Bam! Boxing trainer Tommy Avalos was a boxer since he was five. He fought professionally for five fights and then he decided to train fighters. He first saw Madera training in the gym and he knew Madera had something special. So he decided to teach Madera everything he knew and make him a champion. And the potential he had in him. So uh, um, that's when I met Kilo. We took him to the Nationals. He fought for me in the Nationals. He's a winner. Kilo's a winner, and he, he's an exciting fighter, and he's been with me since. <laughs> Hector and Kalisto prepare for the next fight this July 9th at the Tachi Palace Hotel and Casino in the under, as the undercards to the Jose Ramirez main event fight. Guys. Those two fighters are unique and they're they're very talented. So um, I think this was an honor for me to be able to tell their story. Yeah, yeah. definitely, man. I, imagine their family. They must be so proud. <laughs> Who do you think is better? Oh. The younger brother, I've been told, is has the better potential to be the better fighter. So do you feel like the younger brother like picks on the older brother? <laughs> nah, <laughs> I don't think so. But family for sure, I, I <laughs> for sure would. They are competitive. I'll tell you that. They're oh. very competitive. One, as I was filming, man, people. They were competing against each other. Who had the better shots in cameras? It was crazy. I, they're just oh. very humble kids to be. They know where they came from. It's great to hear stories like that. Always, you know, mm -hmm. rough streets. And mm -hmm. They don't have a sister. Maybe she fights. They too. do. They do. But <laughs> yeah, there you go, people. Yep. <laughs> a girl is coming. Next week on Friendly State Focus, find out what the Pavarello House offers those in need besides meals. Plus, we'll have a story about how much comic books can impact someone's life. Also, how young mothers balance their time to study and take care of their children. Thanks for joining us here at Fresno State Focus. We'll see you next time.